Well, hello everyone. It is Sunday. I think May 31st. It is 2.20, 2.40 p.m. Um, I have received emails, a lot of emails about this uh, JKBMS and what I'm doing with it. Uh, I just wanted to show everybody exactly what I'm doing with it, why am I doing this, and what's the point of all of this. Okay, so here's the first thing, and here's the first reason why I'm doing this. Um, last night, I have decided to do a discharge and charge profile of my modules. Now, I didn't do a full discharge on a battery. I did from 100% down to about 80%. However, I wanted to see how how are my power walls uh, behaving at that time? And now, guys, understand this is less than 0.2 C discharge rate. And if you remember my battery talk video, you will remember this graph here that I used, right? You can see that my maximum power wall voltage is 56.64 and uh, ma uh, maximum discharge, meaning the minimum voltage is 44.8. And then down on the graph, we'll see the discharge, discharge rate uh, voltage profile at 0.2 C rate. Now, when you start looking at this, this is exactly what you see, right? Right now here, this is a last night at about 8 p.m. And you can see that the power wall voltages are at 56.6 volts. Now, same as it is on this chart over here that, we, that, I'm, uh, that I was showing in a battery talk video, we can see that in the first, in the first 20 minutes, we, the voltage on the power walls goes from 56.6 down to 53.25 volts per power wall. And we can see that for the whole night, and I know the discharge was not a lot, we can see for the whole night how flat the discharge is on these uh, 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 lithium iron phosphate cells, right? all night long over here you can see about 9 30 i'm dead asleep guys and all night long while discharging the the discharge curve stays flat so one of the reasons to see this is to prove to myself that yes we do need a proper column counter or battery monitor for these cells something that will be connected with everything and be able to give you some kind of a notice if something's going wrong. We can see over here five o'clock I woke up, made coffee, and then I turn on charging. And then when you turn on charging, the funny thing happens. In within, I don't know, 15 minutes, the power walls go from 53.2 volts up to 54.1 volts and they stay like that for about a good hour now my charging profile is 120 amps constant current constant voltage means about six kilowatts of energy uh being charged well the the battery pack the power was being charged at so this is the charge profile and you can see that suddenly right around 6 30 the curb sharply starts going up meaning that charging is almost done and then we reach maximum charge at 57 volts and then the chargers do realize hey the battery is full they're not taking any more amperage and then it just goes back to float at my 56.6 volts okay now this is all in good this shows a voltage of all three power walls okay so 
let's look at the power wall one right now it's full of course power wall number two power wall number three and then I have incorporated all three power walls on my main Grafana display page together with the heat sink temperatures, the home load, the charge and discharge current. Now, why is this good? Well, here's the thing. There are 48 modules total in my, divided across my three power walls. I can also do a charge and discharge profile of each module for those for those 48 modules. So we are right here, we can make a new panel and we can monitor with a graph each module separately. So we'll go over here, we'll select our database, we're gonna select the measurement and my measurements come from JKBMS battery uh, balancers slash monitors, okay? Then I can select the command and in a tag value, I can put, let's say, let's start with the power wall two, okay? Then in a the field value, you guys seeing this now too, we can choose a cell resistance, see what the cell resistance is. But in this case, let's just choose cell number two we'll try to show we'll try to show a uh, last value okay and then we gotta change this because the name is wrong power wall power wall 2 and then last value and then we can go ahead and add more fields now the different fields would be let's say voltage of module number seven number five so two and five okay we can show what they did over time last six hours Okay, then we can do, to make it easier for you guys to see, we can see this, right? So, in this case, we see that across last five, six hours, we show on the voltage between 3535 and 3550, right? This will auto range right now. So let's go to this menu. Let's expand it. Okay. And then let's see what happened within the last 24 hours. Here is a charge. I mean discharge and charge profile for these two cells, for these two modules on the power wall number two, the module number two and the module number five. We can see how they discharge and how did they charge over time. We can see what the, what the power wall number two was doing with the modules number two and number five. And you can see it's little, there's always a little bit of a difference between all the modules. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to know what's going on because what you can do in these dashboards is if you go back to the edit you can set up alerts guys so if one of the if one of your cells or one of your modules is not performing the way it's supposed to it will actually send you an email it will send you a text message if you set up for that kind of service it will make noise flash at you, beep at you, it will do something. So this is the reason behind it. 
and I always like to know what's going on, especially because I invested so much money into these into these cells, into these powers, I would like them to have every chance of lasting as long as they can. Now, let's talk about a little bit how does this all work. So this is that's the next part of this video, guys. So this is JK BMS. Unfortunately, this one doesn't work. Uh, not yet, but I'm working on it. This is the device that I'm using. Okay. And this is the device that is transmitting all this data that is being saved on my server. And that's how I'm able to extract it and show it through Grafana, right? So let's go take a look, closer look. Okay. That device is connected right there okay you see that red flashing light that means that the device is not connected to Bluetooth right now it's waiting for a command there it is right now it beeped it's connected it received data server received data and it disconnected it's waiting for its turn again. So basically in about 22.5 seconds, I will receive data from the power wall. Can it be made faster? I really don't know. But let's see what does this make? What the, how does this all work? So we have to move to, to this Bluetooth receiver, okay? This device, the JKBMS, works on Bluetooth low energy uh, type of communication. So that your Bluetooth receiver has to be also compatible with the Bluetooth low energy. So what I decided to get for the PC that this is installed on is this Asus BT400 USB Bluetooth module and it's an extension cord coming right here. Now, the interesting thing, I thought that the Bluetooth receiver transmitter, the best, I thought that the best position for it would be as close as possible to JKBMS as it can be. Now, that turns out not to be the truth. Uh, the truth is find the distance that works the best for you and you will make a shortest time between the connect and disconnect with the proper data being read. The best I could achieve was 22.5 seconds between all three power walls and those 48 modules for data to be collected and sent to the server. So you, you gotta be mindful of a distance. I used to have this Bluetooth module hidden right behind because I didn't want it to be shown. I didn't want it to be seen at all once you walk by here. However, placing it there just makes the thing not work. <laughs> it makes it not read the modules and whatnot. And where all this data goes? Well, it goes to this server over here. Now, this little thing runs Ubuntu, Ubuntu 20.04 20 20 LTS uh, operating system. And it will, and it also runs my inverters too and you have seen the stuff from inverters before the reason why i switch onto the linux operating system is because it seems like a lot of things are being developed and they work a whole lot easier on a linux operating system now your uh let me pull it up here your raspberry pi l runs on a linux operating system too so that's the decision I made to have that installed and start learning it and whatnot. So, 16 modules, 16 modules, 16 modules, okay? Each module consists of three cells. Three cells times 48 module modules is how many cells? That's 100 and, what was it, 142? 
4896 plus 4896 plus 48 is 136 modules. I'm sorry. So, so Grafana is working nice. My <clears throat> database is collecting data nonstop. So, Grafana doesn't really matter that much. But, however, the data that I want to collect once I have my solar panels installed will be very important to me to see how good my system is operating. And also, since now I am transitioning to Home Assistant, I'm going to try to incorporate my solar production together with inverters and power walls. I'm going to try to incorporate that into my home, meaning I'm going to use data that comes out of my power walls, that comes out of my inverters, and I'm going to use it to my advantage to automate some things in the house. One of the first things that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to most likely install electric hot water heater in line with my gas hot water heater. Now, the electric hot water heater will be the small one. It will be a 120 volt hot water heater, maybe 20 gallons or so. So once my batteries get charged during the day, all the excess power that is not, that's not being used, basically I'm going to dump that power into hot water heater and kind of try to use it towards my house. Now, that brings me to my next thing. How are you going to do that? Well, I need to develop a really good, I need to develop a really good battery monitor. I am trying to work on one, and I am working on one. However, it's proving to be difficult. As you can see my parts over here, I'm getting there, slowly but surely, I'm getting there. So, my question to you guys is, does anybody know how to program good in Python? Does anybody know how do they make this work in Home Assistant? Does anybody have any idea? Because I'm not that good at programming. All of this help that I received was from Jay Blance on a GitHub. Um, I had my ideas and he was, he was capable enough to implement some of my ideas. But I'm looking for another help. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to have somebody help out develop a really good battery monitor because all of that stuff that it's available, the really good stuff that it's available is very expensive. And don't get me wrong, I do have battery monitor. There's nothing wrong with it. I would just like to have the data off of it in over there in a home assistant so we could automate some things in a house. I would really like to do that and I would really like to start getting on with it. And I think incorporating all of this into a home assistant would be a beneficial for the long term of my system over here. Once I get my solar panels installed. As you can see on the screen, I started working on it can see a garage, you can see a battery voltage, you can see a battery current. I started working on this little project to see how it goes, but I'm not really good at this you know, on, on the software side of things. Hardware, I'll put my hardware against anybody else's as to quality of work. However, software is something that I need help with. Um, you guys take care. The video is already 20 minutes long. I hope most of you were able to get to the end of this video. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of the day.